Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of a life update and just update you on what's gonna be happening over the next couple of weeks because it's probably gonna affect my the content that I can put out and I thought the best way to just deal with it was to make a video about it and then hopefully you won't be kind of wondering where my videos have gone. Um, so yeah, it's not a full life update, but basically, in just over a week, no, when this goes up, it'll be under a week, I think. Um, on the 7th of November, I am going up to London to UCLH um, to have quite a big operation. Um, the operation is called a derotational femoral osteotomy, um, which is basically where the thigh bone is broken and then repositioned and reattached with metalwork of some description. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's a big surgery. It's obviously breaking the biggest bone in your body. Um, and I'm feeling pretty anxious about it at the moment, if I'm totally honest. Um, so I guess I need to start by kind of telling you why I'm having this surgery. I did ask for some questions on Instagram and the main questions that I got were like what is the aim of the surgery and also about recovery. So basically the reason why I'm having this surgery, um, the simple reason is that my thigh bones are twisted too far inwards so when I am standing my knees will put, like point inwards rather than being like out at the front um which i guess in itself isn't a problem however i have had a lot of pain like hip pain knee pain ankle pain for quite a long time and it just seems to be getting worse um i have something called ellis danlos syndrome hypermobility type which is a genetic condition that i was born with and it affects the connective tissue in my body, so it affects my joints, but it also affects internal organs and stuff like that. Um, we don't know if it's necessarily related to that or if it's just something that I have been born with. Um, when I was born, I had dislocatable hips, which is possibly to do with the EDS. Um, and I then, because of those dislocatable hips, I had to wear like a pavlik harness when I was little um, to kind of get the hips to stay in place while the bones kind of formed around them a bit better. Um, so essentially I had hip dysplasia and that was corrected, I guess is the best word for it, with that pavlik harness. Um, the doctor said it could be that because of the way the public harness was put on and obviously your mobility is very very limited that could have influenced the way that my bones have grown but it can also just be something that's like people are born with so yeah basically since my since i've been born my um my femurs have been twisted round um I get pain with my EDS anyway, but we're not sure whether this like rotation is causing extra pain and extra mobility problems. Um, and it's not something that I have known that I had until fairly recently. So originally I went to see um, an orthopedic surgeon at my local hospital because of the hip pain that I'd been getting. He did some just basic x-rays and couldn't see any problems with the actual joints. Um, so I was actually discharged from him because it didn't look like I had any kind of problem. And then, we're not quite sure why, but for some reason I ended up getting referred up to London. I don't know quite, we're not quite, <laughs> my GP was the one that put in the referral, but we couldn't actually find why she'd put it in. So. I don't know, I must have had an appointment with her at some point and that referral got made. Um, and I, at the time I was thinking like, do I really need to go up? I could just cancel it. I've already seen the local one and there's like no problem. But thankfully I went ahead with it and went up to see him. He did lots of examinations and stuff. And then he referred me or sent me to have, um, I think it was CT scans of my whole like legs basically um and then i went back to see him and he was the one that said 
actually your femurs are rotated like a lot inwards and that could be causing some of your pain um, and this was only probably a couple of years ago um, to begin with we decided not to do anything because because of my EDS it's going to make surgery more complicated um, and also he just wasn't happy about doing the surgery unless we felt it was absolutely necessary so we left it for a bit but I've just been finding the pain has been getting worse and worse um, and my mobility is just becoming more and more affected by it so when I last went to see his registrar um, last year we decided that we would put me down on the waiting list to have the surgery. Um, it's taken quite a long time to get it to happen because um, my original consultant had been on leave or he is on leave until um, December and so there's been a bit of like a handover of consultants and all sorts of different things um, but yeah it's finally got to the point where it's time to have it done um, and yeah as I said I am pretty nervous so I guess the aim of the surgery essentially is to rotate my thigh bones back so that they are in the correct position um, to hopefully improve my pain and mobility slightly it's obviously not gonna perhaps improve as it would in a healthy person because the EDS is still going to affect me um, but we're hoping it might just see some improvement um, and also if you leave the thigh bones in the position that they're in at the moment because of the way um, they're in sort of the joints it's gonna like the joints are going to rub against each other a lot more and therefore it's likely to cause things like arthritis and stuff a lot sooner and so I'm going to end up needing things like hip replacements, knee replacements a lot sooner. So as well as it hopefully helping with some of the pain now, it's also quite like a preventative measure to stop me needing further surgeries to sort of the joints in the near future. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a mixed one because I've had various surgeries before and a lot of those have been kind of because I've been ill so for instance I have my appendix out I have my gallbladder out and I had those because those things were making me ill and I knew that taking them out would hopefully make me feel better whereas with this one it's not going to make me significantly better um it's more of like a long-term solution hopefully um, and that is quite difficult to get my head around because essentially I'm going to be making myself a lot worse um, for no like m not for not for like a massive improvement so it's taking me a little bit of time to get my head around that whole concept so I'm actually going to see my um, consultant on Friday so I probably would have seen him actually when this goes up um, because this is the new consultant, I've not actually met him before, so it'd be good to just have a chat with him. Um, I've got quite a lot of questions that I want to ask him. Um, I want to know how long it's going to be until I can drive again. Um, and just like little things, like I want to know how many like incisions they're going to make and all like silly things. Like I said to my mum the other day, like I want to know like am I going to, if I go into shops or like airport security, am I going to set alarms off because I'm going to have metal in me. Just like silly things like that. Um, but yeah, like the driving is quite important to me because that's pretty much my only means of it, like independence. Um, and I know that I'm not going to be able to drive for a while because I'm essentially going to have a broken leg. Um, but it would be good to know sort of roughly how long he thinks that's going to be. Um, so it would be good to like, yeah, just touch base with him and to get a little bit more information. Um, but yeah, the basic thing is that they were gonna, they're going to be cutting into my thigh, breaking the thigh bone um, and then repositioning it with sort of pins or rods or metal plates. I'm not 100% sure exactly how they're going to do it. Um, recovery wise, so... I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure how long I'm going to have to spend in hospital. I've spoken to a couple of people that have had it done. I think one of them spent six days in hospital. One of them was slightly less. It just depends on how I recover from the general anaesthetic, 
um, pain, like whether that's under control. Um, I'm allergic to a lot of painkillers, so that's gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, and also like a physio assessment and an occupational therapy assessment to make sure that they're happy that I can kind of get to the toilet safely, that I can get up and down some stairs safely, that kind of thing. Um, and also because I'm gonna be up in London, I'm gonna have to be able to do the journey home, which is gonna be tricky as well. So it, yeah, I can't kind of give a, a definite answer as to how long I'm gonna be in hospital for, but I'm hoping it won't be any longer than a week. Um, so yeah, once I'm kind of out of hospital, well actually even when I'm in hospital, I'm gonna be on crutches for quite a while. Um, I believe I'm not going to be able to weight bear on my bad leg, um, I think for six weeks, but I'm not 100% sure again on that, that's something else I need to ask. Um, my wrist surgeon has recommended that I ask for like forearm elbow crutches because I've already got a lot of problems with my wrist and if I go on normal crutches it's just going to make that worse. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be hopping around for a while. and. <laughs> it's going to be tricky because my legs aren't, you know, particularly strong. I'm quite weak anyway. I use a wheelchair a lot. So trying to get anywhere on crutches is going to be difficult. So I may find that I'm having to use a wheelchair a lot more to start with. Um, a little bit concerned about getting up and down stairs. Um, obviously, I have to get up two sets of stairs to get to my bedroom. Um, because I'm in a loft conversion so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get up to my bedroom to begin with. I do have a bed in my office here um, so if need be I can sleep in here so that I only have to do one set of stairs and we have like bathroom on this floor as well so that is an option. We are all, we've also put in an application to see if we can get a stair lift that's for like a longer term thing anyway but it would be amazing if that came in like before I had to go to hospital um, but at the moment I'm kind of planning on the fact that we hope we won't have that stair lift um, so yeah it's going to be a long recovery I have heard that your femur can take up to six months to completely heal because it's such a big bone um, it's obviously going to can take quite a long time although hopefully I'll be on my like be able to put weight on it before that so it's going to be a long recovery, there's going to be a lot of physio that's going to like be needed um, and it's going to be difficult, I'm kind of preparing myself for the fact that it's going to be difficult. Um, the other thing is, so I'm having this one done on my right leg, once that is kind of healed and all okay they're going to have to do the left leg as well because they're both, they're both broken basically, <laughs> they're both wonky. Um, but they obviously can't do both legs at the same time because it's, yeah, you wouldn't be able to walk at all. Um, so yeah, recovery wise, it's quite difficult again to say how long recovery will be. Um, I'm guessing that I'll sort of get given maybe a couple of physio exercises up in London and then maybe the physio will get transferred back to home because having to go up to London for physio all the time would be quite difficult. Um, and yeah, that's kind of roughly what's going on. So obviously um, I'm probably not going to be able to upload content for a little while. Um, obviously while I'm in hospital there's no way I'll be able to do anything because I'm probably not going to be taking my laptop or anything up there and um, I'm just going to be focusing on getting better um, and I hope you guys can understand that. I'm really going to miss being able to put stuff up every week but my health has to come first. When I get home, as soon as I feel able to sit at my computer and edit, I want to start getting videos up again, um, I'd like to start getting blog posts up again and it might be that kind of one takes priority so I don't know which one, it just depends on what I'm able to do. Um, but yeah, I don't want there to be too long a gap, but until I know how I am, I just can't say how long I'm gonna kind of be not here for. Um, so please stick with me. <laughs> um, I will be back. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> yeah, I will be back. It just won't be for a few weeks at least because I just, I'm gonna need to focus on recovering from the general anaesthetic because they take me a long time to recover from 
and then obviously I'm gonna have to be spending time doing my physio and just working on that and yeah getting myself better so yeah don't don't go too far I will be back um but yeah keep an eye on my Instagram and Twitter as well because I hope to be able to kind of update those a bit more regularly um because they'll be a lot easier to do when I'm kind of lying down in bed or whatever I do hope to try and document my journey with it as much as I possibly can um, I'm going to be writing a blog post before I go into hospital to just explain everything a little bit more as well um, and then after that it gets a little bit hazy because I would like to possibly well I'd like to try and continue with my weekly vlogs there might be a week that I have to miss when I'm sort of first recovering because I just don't know how much I'm going to be able to film like while I'm in hospital um, I will try and film what I can I will try and take pictures so that I can do blog posts um, but it's just gonna I'm just gonna have to play it by ear basically but I do want to try and document the journey as much as I can because I've certainly found like I have been looking online for information about the procedure and it's been very difficult to come by. I found a lot of medical information about it and especially medical information relating to children but I found it very very difficult to find anything relating to adults and especially any kind of like personal experience. I have managed to find a couple of people on Instagram which has been so helpful. Um, so yeah I want to share my journey with it because I'm hoping it might be able to help other people who might be having the surgery at some point in the future. So yeah do keep an eye out because I think the likelihood is that on this channel anything that I can document will probably go into some sort of weekly vlog whether it's like two weeks squished together um, depending on how much I film I don't know um, and also keep an eye on my blog as well because I will try and do like more in-depth stuff on there I'll try and take pictures um, document physio that kind of stuff so yeah keep your eyes peeled and I hope it's something that might be interesting even if you're not having um, this surgery it might just be interesting to follow sort of my progress um, but yeah just bear with me because everything feels a bit up in the air at the moment I'm one of these people that really like to plan and know what I'm doing and yeah this is just throwing me completely out because I can't plan at all really the only thing I can plan for is that I'm going in on the 7th and I'm having the surgery after that pff, who knows um I am a little bit worried like I mean there's never going to be a good time to have this surgery but I am a bit worried with it coming up to Christmas because I like to be able to get out to see Christmassy stuff to do Christmassy stuff to do a little bit of Christmas shopping and I just don't know what I'm going to be able to do. I might be doing a lot of stuff online this year um, and I might just have to accept that I'm not going to get out as much as I like, like usually try to. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to, I think it's going to be quite hard mentally. Um, so I'm trying to prepare myself for that. I feel quite scared about the operation. I mean, I've had surgeries before and I do get a bit anxious about them but I've never been as anxious as, as I am about this one but I think this is probably the biggest surgery that I've had or will have had. Um, so yeah I'm scared about having an anaesthetic, I am scared about uh, the like the surgery in itself you know having your bone broken um, just little things like when I went for my pre-op they did bloods and one of the bloods that they do is um, like a group and save basically to find out what blood type you are in case you're going to need a blood transfusion um, because you can lose a lot of blood through an operation like this um, I don't know like they give you a leaflet with all the risks and I'm, I'm always in two minds about whether to read it but I had a glance over it and that's got my anxiety going because there are a lot of risks with it and especially with having EDS as well there are more risks um, to the surgery so I am quite scared about all of that I'm anxious about the fact that I'm going to be up in London it's not going to be very easy for my family to visit me because it's a long journey for them to get there um, you know if I'm in a local hospital my family can pretty much visit me every day whereas up in London 
that's just not going to be able to happen so I am a bit anxious about you know being on my own and I, I'm sure the hospital staff will look after me well and I can like talk to people on the phone and all that kind of stuff but you know when sometimes when you just want to cuddle with your mum or something like I'm not necessarily going to be able to have that um I guess that will be you know something that will kind of push me to want to get home which will be a good thing though um but yeah I'm just I am really nervous about the whole thing it's a massive thing to go into especially when it's not kind of it's not like a life-saving operation or anything like that it's just to hopefully make things better for the future so it's quite difficult to get my head around making myself so much worse um and then I'm just nervous about the whole recovery how long it will take what impact it might have on my mental health um and I think there's only so much you can do to prepare for that kind of thing so I think I'm literally just going to have to take it a day at a time and see see how things go. Um, once I feel a bit better I want to try and plan some little things just to kind of keep me going to look forward to. So if anyone has any ideas of things that I can plan do let me know. Um, also if you've got any ideas of like what I should take to hospital with me let me know as well. I've got a few ideas and I've spoken to a couple of people who have given me some great ideas but yeah let me know what kind of things you have taken into hospital if you've been in for a little while um i mean i've been in hospitals before for a lot longer than this but it's been for different things so i've been able to take other stuff because i've been I've, it's not been for like operations so i knew i'd be okay to sort of do stuff so yeah if you've gone in for sort of major surgery do let me know what sort of things you would recommend taking i think that pretty much explains everything that I can possibly explain um, and I'm hoping that this will just give you a bit of a heads up about why I'm not going to be around for the next couple of weeks or whatever that's going to be. Um, it's not that I've forgotten my YouTube, I will be coming back just yeah doing some health stuff at the moment. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you have enjoyed it, sounds a bit weird to say that. If, if you have enjoyed it and you want to see more videos from me once I'm like starting to recover, please do give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell, that'll mean you don't miss any videos when I upload them, you'll get notified. So when I do take a break, you'll get notified when the first video comes back. Um, also follow me on social media, as I said, all the links are in my description bar below. Twitter and Instagram are probably where, probably where I will be most active, so yeah, definitely give me a follow on those, come and say hello, keep me company while I'm recovering, um, leave me a comment, let me know if you've been through this operation before, I'd really love to talk to other people about their experiences, um, also feel free to just leave me a nice message, something to make me smile, to keep me going, um, and yeah that would be really nice and also let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see either about this operation and my recovery or about anything else let me know and I will hopefully see you in another video very soon I'm hoping it won't be too long and yeah I'm really gonna miss you so I will see you very soon bye